the TurboGrafx CD had a very, very limited library. So sometimes, to find a new game that you really want to play for this system, you're going to have to import a PC Engine CD game. Hey, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I do the review of a game I cannot pronounce, but we're just going to call it Chris's Adventure for the PC Engine CD. Second Opinion Games. So your lead character is Chris. She's a very affluent, pretty girl with a long, flowing ponytail and short shorts, jet-setting around the world and raiding tombs. That's pretty much what I figure. I don't think her parents are dead or anything, so it's not like someone could completely rip off this game. It did come out in 1992, many years before Tomb Raider, and... Here it is. The game looks beautiful. It is a side-scrolling action-adventure game. And in between levels, there are some cutscenes that are all in Japanese and make no sense to me. But some of them are really, really cool to look at. It starts off with level 1, which is a simple run-to-the-right level. And then it goes into level 1-2 which has very, very tricky jumping. Matter of fact, this stage, very early in the game, has the trickiest jumping anywhere in the entire game. And this is also where you get to see the timer limit. See, it says how many days there are left at the beginning of each level, and you'll see at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, time passes by very, very quickly. So if you spend too much time trying to jump up to the top of this section, you're gonna die because time ran out. And that's really, really lame. I really wish there was no time limit at all. But the fact that you're always racing the clock keeps you pushing forward as fast as you can. And this whole game actually can be beaten in a speedrun in probably about 40 minutes or so, assuming you have the right weapons. So what are the weapons upgraded and how do they work? Well... It's a little confusing, especially because I can't read the manual, it's all in Japanese. But basically, you start off with a knife. You end up getting different color orbs to do different things. For example, a red and blue orb give you the best weapon in the game, just a projectile that goes all the way across the screen. There's also another projectile that gives you like a strider-like sword swing. And another one that gives you a boomerang that only works going one direction and doesn't go all the way across the screen. And I usually only get it if I absolutely need to. Matter of fact, once you get the red-blue combination, never ever switch unless you have to. Later in the game, there are these guys that run up and try and steal your weapons from you, aka your orbs. And if they do, it will take away that weapon. It's very annoying, but if you plan your jumps right, you can just jump right over them, and it moves on. Taking a look at some of the bosses in this game, well, the first boss is a giant skull with a brain in it, and this is actually really, really cool. I, I love the art style. Matter of fact, in this game, the art style is beautiful. Sometimes it even looks a little 3D on my eyes. The last level can get very, very tricky though, but then again, that's the whole game. There are certain sections that you kind of have to play over and over to figure out, and other ones you can just run through rather quickly. In total, it only took me about three hours from the very first time I started playing this game to the time I beat it. So it's not a huge time sink. And honestly, if there was an English translation version, I would buy that immediately because I love the game so much. Now, finding this game is a little difficult. You're probably going to have to go to eBay just to select a copy for about $40. However, you might have to wait a year or so before a copy even shows up on eBay. Most of the other bosses in this game are complete pushovers. Sometimes they could just be like a high priestess, or another high priestess, or a weird coin medallion type thing that's actually really easy once you figure out how to beat it. 
And other times you'll fight a guy that seems to know karate out of freaking nowhere. So sometimes these bosses are hit or miss, and other times they are truly epic. AKA just that first one with the skull. That's that's really the only epic one. The last boss of the game looks huge and pretty much does nothing other than stand there. It took me a little bit to figure him out, but basically if you crouch in the corner and just swing violently, you'll end up killing him. Assuming you don't get hit too many times by some crazy orbs. The areas and locations in this game are vast. There are only about eight total worlds and two levels per world. Your life fills up after each stage and after each boss battle, so you don't have to worry too much about that. That time limit can be a major issue. Most of the time, I just find myself picking up the wrong weapon, which totally screws me, or I fall into a pit again and again, also can be a little frustrating. The minecart here is actually really easy, but sometimes I'm really dumb and die anyway. And if you die too many times, you have to continue, of course. And when you do, you're starting back up with the knife again. In upper levels of the game, this can be extremely frustrating. Sometimes making it to a boss with just your knife and having to take it out. Also, this game does not have infinite continues. It only has three of them, so you'll probably have to start all the way back to the beginning at least once or twice, maybe even three times. Now I have the full name in the description down here and I highly recommend you check it out. If I had to give this game an arbitrary score, I would say it's about four turbo CDs out of five, making it one of the better games and a deal at only $40. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you like this review, and I have a ton more Turbo CD games left to show you. So in the future, every single Wednesday, I post a review. The first Wednesday of the month, I post a new Atari Jaguar review. And if you love the Atari Jaguar, well, I pretty much reviewed every single game you could possibly imagine. So until later, I'll see you again, guys. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.